Jay here for Stratford Paddock. That's David Pritt, which means one thing and one thing alone. This is the Academy Review. It's an Academy Review special, isn't it, Dave? Because you was at uh, Lee Sports Village last night for the UEFA Youth Cup. Youth League. Youth League, sorry. Not the Cup. The League, I'm doing it a disservice. No one likes Cups anymore. It's all about leagues. Yeah. So I'm check. We, yeah, the Champions League was still in that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> An interesting game, ultimately not a successful game for Manchester United, didn't go through, but wasn't all doom and gloom. Just talk us through it, tell us a little bit about the game, um, starting from the beginning, you know, how, how it kicked off. Yeah, well, first of all, this is like the round of 16. United have got to this stage, I think, three other times, including this one, sorry, so two other times, and we've never been able to get past this point. And for me, this was the best chance to do it, you know, with the better team on the day and stuff. I mean, we got knocked out once, I did it, an away game in this. Tranmere, Liverpool. What? Yeah, got beat by Liverpool one year. And then Mitchell and, remember them? Yeah. Marcus Rashford, yeah, they beat us as well in this round. Really? Yeah. I don't know what's worse, Mitchell and all the scouts is knocking us out. Poor referee decisions, obviously, even though I don't remember any of those games. But yeah, this this time we had Borussia Dortmund, which um, obviously a good good team, good game. I think they got, uh, you know, they're taking English lads left, right and centre. I think the number seven for them was uh, an English lad as well. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, um, well. Suppose that this is the world we live in, cosmopolitan. So yeah, eight o'clock kickoff in Lee, which nightmare. Nightmare it is. If you've not been to Lee Sports Village, you've not lived. Um, <laughs> but it is a bit of a mooch, isn't it? Yeah. And this is why the likes of Stephen Housen, for example, and others have been saying we need a dedicated academy stadium that's not miles away from, or, or just somewhere that's on a bus route or a yeah, or a stop. Lee Sports Village. I've took, I've been there. I've been to the under twenty threes a few times. Took the family. On a Friday evening, and it can you don't be get back till two in the morning. Yeah, it is a bit of a nightmare <laughs> getting there and getting back. Uh, so you were there last night. So, like you say, first time. Well, this was an opportunity to, to to break that duck of never getting past the last sixteen in the UEFA Youth League, uh, but it didn't quite go according to plan. No, it was a bit of a mixture, really, of some of the twenty threes and the under eighteens. You had like uh, Gerardo. You had um, you had. Sorry, Charlie McNeil, he played, Ganacho played, and then you also had like a Charlie Savage, Zananic Bell, Shola Shoratere. I just want to quickly ask you about Shola Shoratere, because I mean you spoke a lot about him over the last couple of years since we've been doing this. Last year we seem to be talking about him more than we are this season. What's happening with him? Is he just it do you think he's has he plateaued at all? Is he just not? I don't know. Him? I think he's, he's still growing at the moment. He's always yeah. been a small lad and when I saw him last night, he looked quite stocky and quite not not like massive, but you yeah, know, like he looked bigger than what he's and I think they're just being careful with him because he's. I, think I mean, he's that's a good thing. Yeah. I'm not because it's suggesting that you know this teenager by any stretch is you know his career's not going the way it should. I just know last year there was a lot of hype, if you want, yeah. you know, for want of a better word. This season we've not heard as much about him, but he's obviously you know, yeah, he's well, in from, that stage of his career from last night's performance. I, you know, he, I, I thought he played well. I think the whole team played well, to be honest. Um, but yeah, you can't have any complaints with him. If, I think if we needed someone in that position in um, in the league or the cup or something, why not give him a shot? But yeah, the game, the funny one, both teams are great. Um, Dortmund scored um, a counter attack goal. It was like, I think it was three on two at the time. Took it really well, to be honest with him. And um, they celebrated. Quite a few Dortmund fans there. And I think if some of the family were there. So it was a bit of a roar when they scored. But after that, Dortmund for the next few minutes, with one, two touch passing, looked unbelievable. Honestly, some of the some of the movements we were doing, I, was, I got a bit worried thinking, yeah, we we're going to be in trouble here. But. You know, I'd get the ball, bit of some great movement. Then Zidane McGall gets it in the box, wiggling around, getting past a few players. Plays it to Charlie McNeil. He turns on on it and then blasts it into the top of the goal. Um, really, really well worked goal. Made it one one. And then for the rest of the half, it was just a bit of back and forth. You know, both teams looking excellent, and it could have really gone either way. United had the ball in the back of the net. Flag was up for offside, but I need to see that back. I've heard, I've read online, it's a bit, maybe should have been a goal. Yeah. But yeah, 1-1, one, one, um, half time, and both teams were in it. Really, really entertaining game for the first half. Yeah. When you said you were worried because of the, the, the football that, that Dortmund were playing, what does that say about the fact that United got back into it and, and were able to sort of handle that? Yeah, well, like I said, I, I list some of the team off. It's a good team. They, they've played in big games, and like like the under eighteen lads who've been in the youth cup recently at Old Trafford, they're used to the bigger games with the big crowds. And I mean, there's a biggish crowd last night as well. So I don't think it's an, any pressure on them. They just play football and do well. But the second half started, and it was a different story. It was for me all United, <laughs> absolutely dominated that half. Played some amazing football. 
had chance after chance, ball in the net again, offside. Once again, read, I'm not seeing the replay, but I've read online that maybe it should have been a goal. Yeah. Then um, Dortmund, against the run of play, get a goal and celebrate like they won the World Cup. Um, and then it was, yeah, still United just going for it, going for it. And then just you just thought that we weren't going to get anything. Hannibal was taken out, but it was hard to say whether he... It was a, a bad foul on him. He was in the corner down for a little bit because of his past. I know he doesn't do it as much, but he's always been one for, if you give him a little tap, he'll roll around on the floor, complain. So it was, it was hard to tell. Um, but five, five minutes to go, Bull's in the box, comes to the back um, edge of the D, Reese Bennett, centre-back, takes it down, boosh, right at the top of the goal, down the middle. Maybe keep should have done well. Didn't, but the power of it, even if he was there, it would have gone through. So it's 2-2. And then right at the end, you've seen this. Yeah, I haven't. It's it's, the, uh, it's shocking to say. So, do you know what? Let's call it as it is. It's one of the, the sort of worst decisions I've seen or non-decisions I've seen. Right, so, so I'm close to the halfway line. I see it happen and I'm like, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I didn't really up in arms thinking definite penalty. But when you watch the replay and you see the position of the, of the referee, he's like from here to that camera away. And he's looking straight at it. It's not like he's, he's blocked by anything. You can see the guy's leg go into McNeil's leg, take him out, and he's down. It's a definite penalty. And that, that was the 92nd minute, I think. If we score that, we've won, we're through. But yeah, the referee who was not the... I wouldn't say he, won't, but he was oh, bad, but... We've got him, his name Sweden. here on a piece of paper. Kasper Schoiberg. Yeah. yeah. Disgrace. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's what I've got to say about you, son. Hey, someone wants to check his bank balance, allegedly. Because um, it was an awful decision. It was a, it's right it, in it front was, of him. It was, honestly, if he, if he was blocked or just didn't see it, you'd say, yeah, it was a penalty, but he didn't see it. What can you do? There's yeah. no VAR. He saw it. Yeah. He saw it happen. And he's literally, the guy goes over, kicks Charlie McNeil, knocks him over, doesn't get any of the ball, not even near the ball. It's as blatant a Stonewall penalty as you will ever see. And I could not believe, I watched the replay so many times, I was like, how was he not giving it? And the referee is like, from me to you, away well, from it. I was just right in front I wasn't of him, as angry, looking at it. Like, at the time, because I'm thinking, maybe it wasn't a penalty, because yeah. the referee's there. Uh, Once I get home and I see it on Twitter, that I'm like, what? Uh, yeah. I was fuming, honestly, it was, it, it just spoiled it, really, because we were the better team, and we did deserve to win it in 90 minutes, and that would have sealed it. But unfortunately, it was finished 2-2, and then it went to penalties, and yeah. Not great. We scored the first one. No, no, they scored the first one. We scored this, the this first one for us. Dortmund step up again. The guy slips, um, scores but slips. The referee says that he touched it twice. Which wow. so we, then Charlie McNeil steps up, hits you the put, post. I mean, you put your, your yeah. mortgage on Charlie McNeil, wouldn't you? Especially after he took his goal. You know, his yeah. confidence. But maybe he's a bit thinking about that penalty a little bit. Well, you don't know because he's a young lad. It gets in your head. You've had this injustice. He must know that he's just been denied a last-minute winner. So I wouldn't blame him if it was in his head. Unfortunately, hit the post. You could see straight away he had his shirt over his head and he was gutted. And maybe he should have just run back and just... Maybe maybe put a little bit of down on the other lads. Um, we went, Hannibal missed the next one for us. Then Noam Remmer and he missed the next one. And it was just... They just scored the rest of theirs. No, they missed one of theirs and they scored the rest. 3-1, they ended up winning it. We didn't even get to take our last one. It was, yeah, disappointing. And it's just it's just gutting because sometimes you can go to a game and say, yeah, fair play to Dorman. They were the better team. Good luck to him. And I will say good luck to him, but they didn't deserve to go for it. We, we were the better team. We should have been, yeah, I think it was against one of the Madrid teams. It, the next round would have been. So Atletico or Real Madrid. The lads should have been playing in that game because... Yeah, they were excellent and deserved it. It's such a shame, and, and you know, you mentioned there about McNeil. He's got nothing to be ashamed of. No, of course Absolutely, not. Absolutely, you know, fantastic players having a fantastic season. Obviously, had a, a great game as well. It's just unfortunate his penalties at the post. I mean, we've seen it th throughout history. We saw it in the summer, didn't we? It happened to to a few people. It can happen. It's a shame that we're talking about penalties. We're talking about a penalty that wasn't given instead of talking about Manchester United going through because. I know we can sit here and we can say, oh, you know, this decision had gone that way or this decision had gone that way. But if you see that, if you see the one against McNeil in the last it's minute, ridiculous. you can't help but feel that there's something really wrong about what happened there because it is an awful decision. I don't it's think, so I don't, bad. I don't think the referee was biased. I just think he made an awful decision. Yeah. Maybe he panicked a little bit, I think, because I don't know what, what level yeah. he's ref refereed at before. But 
he looks at he looks at it, it's a ninety second minute, he panics it, or do we shall I give a penalty and just he just doesn't give it. Just, yeah. It's the wrongest what it was, it was a penalty and he should have given it. I mean, this is a UEFA youth league game. Yeah. This is an, a, a like UEFA say, the, approved referee. Like the, the referees have come over from, and the assistants have come yeah. over from Sweden, so it's not like they've just gotten from Altrincham. No, you know. it's not like I just called them out of the crowd. This yeah. is a guy that's obviously done all these, whatever he needs to do to be a qualified ref, is at the top of his profession, and yet he's, he's making decisions like that that mean, for me, he shouldn't be refereeing the red line versus the dog and duck, mm-hmm. to be honest with you, because I just think if he can't, call a foul like that that is so obvious so blatant and it almost ruined but it does ruin a game of football with a load of teenagers playing in it then you should be you should be looking at other career options in my opinion anyway but the lads need to bounce back really it's a very important week this week two massive games for the under 18s that is sorry so on Saturday the local derby with Manchester City uh, yeah so which if they if they win that heads will be you know they'll be right up there confidence and then a a week today, which is Wednesday, we'll be having the semi-final of the FA Youth Cup against Wolves at Old Trafford. Big game, big game. game. Semi-final of the FA Youth Cup against Wolverhampton Wanderers. I mean, like you say, it is a big one, isn't it? And then, obviously, without, without saying, you know, you're one step away from the final. So, exactly. the FA Youth Cup, that is, that's that's your chance, in it, to, it is. to and get etched into history. And I mean, young players or players that have been through youth systems and then go to the into the first team. Look at our most famous players, the colour class of ninety two. The colour class of ninety two because they won the FA Youth Cup in yeah. ninety nine. That's the thing in it like the, everyone wants to win and we haven't won it since Lingard Pogba era of what, twenty eleven? Class of twenty eleven, yeah. yeah. You know, when, who, was Je- when Jesse- man, who was the main man in that team, David? Yeah, well go on, I'll let you say his name because you love him so much. Ryan Sonnicliffe. Never mind about your Jesse Lingards and your Paul Pogbas and your Ravel Morrisons. There was one cog in that machine that held it all together. Mr. Tony Cliff. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree. Um, no, no, can you? It's but facts. Like when Jesse Lingard won, he scored the winning goal, didn't he, in the FA Cup in 2016? 20 Van Gaal. Van Gaal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant the Youth Cup. Yeah, 2016 yeah. at so Crystal Palace. So when he got home, the first picture he took was he put his Youth Cup medal and his FA Cup medal next to each other and posted it on Instagram or whatever he posted it on. And it shows you that that Youth Cup means a lot to a lot of the players. So if they can, two games away, if they, if they win, it's... I remember. Could be glorious. I remember when we won it in '92. I remember we won it in '95. I think we won it. Phil Neville. Phil Neville. Yeah, I think uh, Terry Cook was the star of that yeah. uh, team. Um, and then obviously again in 2011, we we had a great history with it in the 50s with Busby. We used to win it. I think. I think we won it the first five years. Yeah, something England. ridiculous. Just, we just dominated it basically yeah. until Munich. So we've got a great history with this competition. Great record in this competition. And like you said, it's something that stays with these players I think, yeah, forever. Like, I think George Best won it in 63 as well, I think. Or, Probably. Yeah, it's, well, he won it at some point. But, of course. Yeah, players who, like Bobby Charlton, he's won it. But, you know, everyone you, you talk about in United who've come from the ranks usually have won that, that you've cut. It's such a yeah. difficult competition to win. I know that sounds is. obvious because I think United two. We won it in '93. I think we got to the got final. Got to the final against Leeds. Leeds, against Leeds yeah. and we got beat. Paul Scholes' team. Yeah, and yeah. you think, how has that happened? But because Leeds had such a good team then as well, didn't they? They had like their own youngsters who went on to to the first team, and many of them went on to bigger and better things. So it shows you the caliber. Of yeah, and the there. issue is now, especially for United. United, does they pick the talent. They do get talent from abroad, but they try and keep it local based. Like they 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 just do. It. So it's just always been the way to have local lads playing. Then you've got City, who obviously doing what they're doing, trying to become this massive brand. They they want to win the youth cups and the like the under 18s league, so they're getting players from here, there, and everywhere. And they said they're just copying the Chelsea model, which Chelsea have got how many youth players and how many players on loan. It's you know it's it's a, it's one way to do it. And it's a way of making money because you can then sell them on afterwards. But they win them the trophies, but you don't see many going on to playing the first team. Maybe Mount and Reese James for Chelsea, but there's not many. Usually they're brought in to then win something and move on. Well, United, it's about, especially in the academy, it's about they're not that bothered about winning things. It's about if rather than winning things, we want that player to come and play for the first team. But I think it's a little bit different with the Youth Cup. They want to win the Youth Cup. If they don't win the under-18s league, I don't think it's a big deal. But I think they've thrown all their eggs in the same basket for the Youth Cup. All the eggs in one basket for the Youth Cup. We'll be there next week, can't we? We'll be there at that game. So make sure you are checking out. We'll have all the socials, giving all the social posts, and we'll have a review after the game as well. Dave, wasn't the result we wanted, but the boys, as always, have a lot to be proud about and certain players. You can expect to see them in the 
Champions League in future years, can't we? Never mind the UEFA Youth League. It's just a shame that and what's his like name? A, we'll the, name check you again. Casper Soyberg had to ruin it. And for the everyone. biggest shame is is because the the first team aren't doing great. They won't be able to play in the Youth League next year because in order to qualify, you've got to either win it or you've got to have your first team qualify for the Champions League. So, unfortunately for these lads, they won't be in it next year. Well, what do you mean? Well, we, we'll qualify for the Champions League when we win it. That is, hey. tr- that is true. Hey, four is coming. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll get them there next season. Next season will be our season in the UEFA Youth League. We're not about the, ch- the, the playing to get the lads in the Youth League. That's, That's all that matters. Hey, forget about the Champions League. Yeah, anyone can win that. The Scousers win it loads of times. That doesn't matter. It's the UEFA Youth League that counts, right? We was robbed, but we'll be back. Dave... Thanks for coming on the channel. Anytime. As always, it's been a pleasure. Make sure you're checking out Dave on all his socials. Wait, what's your uh, Twitter handle, as they say? I think it's David J. Pritz, but you don't, you, David, you don't have to. You, you don't have to. You've got to follow him. Follow him. You don't want to, Don't worry about it. You know where to find me as well. Uh, make sure you are hitting subscribe as well. Let's uh, get to 700,000 subscribers by the end of the season on the channel. With your support, we can do it. Go and check out the merchandise as well, paddockmerch.com. I've been Jay. That's been Dave. This has been the Academy Review. Thanks for watching.